I'd like to welcome you all to Deal Aeronautical here in Jinx, America. Uh, actually, that's Oklahoma. But we build the wing skins for the KR-2 here. Uh, my name is Dan Deal, and I'm working with Ken Cottle, and we're working on Ken's project. This is a KR, KR-2 that has been narrowed down and made in, it's not as skinny as a KR-1, but it's kind of halfway in between. He calls it a KR-1 and a half. Uh, Ken is using the KR-2 outer wing panel as it's molded the way, in other words, it's our standard wing skin. But in order to get a smaller wingspan, he made a center section wing narrower. And by doing that, he can skinny up the, the center section and the total span will be just that of a little bit more than a KR-1. Okay, Ken has got about, uh, what is this, about 12 inches? About 12 inches. Outside the fuselage, and the fuselage of this bar here is uh, 27 inches wide? 27 inches. 20, 24 inches. 24 inches wide right here at the main spot. So he's got his little block set on here. Remember these are three and a half inches tall, just like the plans and the uh, wing skin information uh, she called for. Now these are three and a half inches tall. Stand them on top of the center section spar. And if you'll, if you'll run a, a tight string across the top of these two blocks, straight out to the tip, it'll, it'll touch the main spar right at that point. That sets your dihedral. Now you don't have to worry about washout or anything like that at this point. All you're trying to do is get the, the dihedral on both wings the same. Obviously, if you use the same two blocks, you're going to have the same washout. You don't have to worry about the airplane being level or anything like that. It doesn't matter because it's all referenced all off of the center section. The next step was to take this this 32-inch uh, rib, and it has a, a line on it that is, is marked out here on the tip. In fact, does this show up in here? There's a little line right down here? Okay, now when we send this, these rib patterns out to you, they'll already have that line on there, and that's actually a three-degree washout line. So if you'll notice the airplane, the tail is, is real high. Okay, what we've done, We've taken a level, we just put a tape on there to give us a little bit more, uh, make a longer level out of it, and we've leveled the, the cord line in the center section of the wing. So we had the level down inside the wing here. Okay, now, if, you, if you're thinking that the tail looks high, well it actually is. Remember you've got three and a half inches, I mean three and a half degrees of incidence built into the center section wing. So in order for that cord line to be level, this, the top long draw actually is going to be nose low. Okay? We don't really care about what the fuselage is doing at this point. All we're interested in is making sure that our cord line at the root is, is level. Okay? So now we've got the airplane blocked up where it needs to be to do that. And we can come out here with this rib um, fr from the nose or the leading edge of the rib right here to the center of the spar is eight inches. Okay? Now just put put your level. Well these nails are in the way right now, but they weren't earlier. Put your level on that line and you can adjust this rib to where that line is level. Okay, then go ahead and put you a couple more nails in there. We actually went ahead and put a little cotton flux with our resin, vinyl ester resin put it in there and put these nails in there to hold it. We just wrap tape around the end here to hold it up tight. Okay, now that sets your washout. The next step is to come here then and get the rear spar. Are you able to get that in this picture? You see where I'm touching here? Okay, get the rear spar and uh, I forget this dimension, Ken, what was it? 22 from the tip. 22, 22 and a quarter from the from the nose rib to the center of the rear spar. That's 22 and a quarter inches. Okay, so you hold the hold the uh, rear spar right at that point, and, and and align it up and down so that obviously it's got to fit inside the rib. Okay, put a little nail in it to hold the tip here. Come back here to the center section, and. He already had his fittings hanging all out here. So all he had to do was put a C-clamp on here and 
drill these attach bolts. Okay, now the rear spar is set and your washout is all set already. Now, if you've if you got a large enough garage, or if you do this out in your front yard, you can go ahead and do both sides at the same time. That way you make sure that both wings are set exactly right. In fact, you don't even have to do the whole wing. All you have to do is put the main spar on and put the tip rib on. Go ahead and glue it on both tips. But if you don't move the fuselage, or, or raise or lower the tail at all, and you glue both tip ribs on so that the level line is level, then the, then the two wings have to be straight with each other. In other words, you're not going to get an airplane that's going to try to slowly roll off on you. Okay? Okay, something I want to point out right here. We're fixing to start uh, put, you know, fitting the bottom wing skin. You notice the airplane is in the upright position. You never have to turn the airplane over when you're building the wing with these wing skins. Okay, one thing I want to show real carefully, see these little holes right in here. Each one of the little bays in the spar, in the main spar here we're talking about, uh, has been drilled with a little hole. Now that's a vent hole. At any time you have plywood on both sides of a box spar, you've got to somehow allow for air pressure to go in and out of there. If you don't, if you seal all that up tight, you go up to altitude where the air is thin, you're going to explode your spar because you've got that pressure in there. Okay, so if you've forgotten to do that in your center section main spar or your center section rear spar or your outer spar, you can go ahead and drill it through each one of the, and through the plywood web. That's just about an eighth inch hole. Now, if, you're, if you've not yet sealed everything up, you can drill between each of the vertical webs, like an eighth inch hole or so, and, but make sure it bleeds out either at the tip or at the inboard end so that the air can pass through those. Okay, now we've got the rear spar all drilled and glued in place. We've got the main spar in. We've got the tip rib on. Uh, we're ready to start fitting. Oh, one other hole I'll mention. See the big hole in the uh, in the tip of the spar. A lot of you are trying to figure out how to put wing tie downs in. Now, some of you will, uh, if you if you got your airplane all built, you'll see guys tying them down to the main gear. Really, that's all right, except that the main gear is in fairly close to the uh, fuselage. And if a big wind comes up, it's going to be trying to pick up on a wing tip. So actually, it's better to have a wing tied in up near the tip. Now, he's, Ken has cut this hole in here so that he can uh, put like a uh, eye bolt or a lot, of the, a lot of the guys will use a, um, oh, it's a bow eye that's made for a, for a boat. It goes in the front of a boat so you can tie a rope on it to pull it up on the trailer. Okay, you can grill that. It's like a 3 8 hole up from below. After the wing skin's applied, put your uh, your bow eye or your tie down hook up from there, and then you can put a large washer in here with a nut on it. And this gets you, gets you access. Now, be sure that you put that only out near the tip here. Don't come back in the middle of your spar and put that, because you don't want to put a hole in the web way back here. Okay, keep it out right near the tip. Okay, we're ready to start fitting up the uh, bottom wing skin. There's no real trick to this. Except there's several points you want to look for. If you already have your center section done, then you've got to make your wing fit the center section. Okay? So as we hold it up, we want the bottom to fit flush. As we come around the leading edge, this is going to be, it's got to all line up. Uh, across the bottom, it fits just perfect. Um, obviously, your spar should be in the part of the wing skin where there's no foam. Then out near the tip, we're going to have to cut the uh, the tip rib out about a quarter of an inch for the thickness of the foam, right where the foam is on the wing skin. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to pull the wing skin up far enough to make good contact with the bottom of the spar on the skin. In other words, we've got to be able to get good contact with the skin all the way up against the spar. So we're going to have to do a little trimming on our tip rib. Ken's cutting off this excess right here and made his center section actually come out a little bit further than what he needed to for the for the wings. So he's cutting it back to the center of the bolt here, the attached bolt. And uh, to cut this uh, glass or the wing skins, anything, we use a, uh, it's a, about a sixteenth thick, it's an abrasive disc uh, cutter and a little air tool. Turns about 20,000 RPM. And it'll eat that stuff right up. Go ahead. When you 
cutting is one thing you got to be careful about when you go across where the wing attach fittings are underneath. You got to really ease up. You don't want to be cutting through your attach fittings or make a mark in them. So you got to be real careful when you cut across where your attach fittings are.
little bit of flops back into this joint here where the uh, on the end of the spar itself you get me a nail.
and make a nice smooth little what we call a finger fillet in there. The vinyl ester resin, if, you, if you're using vinyl ester resin, which is what we recommend, is non-allergenic. So you don't have any problem with skin allergies with the vinyl ester resin. Uh, we really do not recommend any uh, safety epoxy. Some of the guys have built, one guy built one, built a set of wings with safety epoxy and his, his kid's bicycle fell over on it. And, uh, and it split a little bit at the trailing edge, so we thought he split it apart a little bit more with a screwdriver pocket. I have to work a little of the flocks back in there, and the, and the split just kept going. Pretty soon he had both skins completely off of the wing again. The safety epoxy does not bond to this vinyl ester resin.
up at it to show this this time. But when they fit it, we didn't find it. That's what's happening here. We're filling this whole box here, this gap, which is okay. Yeah, but you want to look right. Okay, some of you have probably already spotted, are you filming this? The, the rear spar. Uh, you're going to say, oh, he's got that in there backwards. You're right, he does. But that was one of those things that you just kind of do now and then. You make a mistake. It's okay. In this case, it actually fit a little better because he had to put a little bit of a doubler on the forward side here. He's got an extra eighth of an inch of plywood right here to, to make his spacing come out right on his wing attach fittings. And it just seemed to fit a little better by turning it over. Structurally, it doesn't matter at all. So you can put that on the web on the front or the back. Normally, you put the web on the forward side. It makes it easier to build a fuel tank and stuff like that in the back later. Quarter of an inch. 
Some of you guys that have bought wing skins up before this tape was made, you found that this rib was an inch too long. Well, all you got to do is just keep cutting it down until it fits in there. I didn't discover it until we started making this one. It'll just go right on the end of the stub spar. The thing I want to point out before you start gluing these nose ribs on, as well as the trailing edge, is eyeball, get right down here in line and, and, and make sure that this leading edge is straight all the way down to the tip. They have a tendency when you plant them up there to try to kind of sag down in the middle. But you just notice it's still, still fairly flexible here. So we want to uh, pull that up and, and make it straight. Uh, the way we do it, the easiest way in a way, is, is to get someone to help you pull it up where it needs to be and then just put a clamp. I'm just taking this board down to the ground. And that'll hold a little up pressure on it. Obviously, if somebody's moving the airplane around, it's going to be, you know, this whole thing will be moving. So you have to have everybody keep still. If I eyeball right down in front of this, now I find that that's nice and straight there. All right down this, this leading edge. Now we're ready to go ahead and glue those ribs in. We'll just use a little flocks with our vinyl ester resin. Uh, obviously, we've got to, uh, before we do that, we've got to take our wire brush and eat a little foam out and then the pieces fit right in. Also on the trailing edge, you'll want to you'll want to look right straight down that also and make sure it's not bowed down when you glue that. Sometimes you'll have to take a little piece of angle aluminum or something and jack that up to make it all straight. Okay, we've got this, uh, all the ribs now are glued in, this, in the left wing and they've, they've already got the, uh, all the wires fitted in. We've got the, uh, the uh, wing tip light wires here and we've got the uh, antenna wire coming in here for his VOR antenna. He's got it mounted here and drilled through the sparks of the little wire, the, the antenna, it's a V-shaped repair. It goes out through the, in the center section of the wing. He's got his bracket made right here where he can put his uh, pedo and his static lines on there. There's two little lines and fittings, and those poke through the bottom of the skin. And he's got little pieces of uh, plastic rubber hose going through the ribs so that the uh, wires will go through there. Right in here he's got his, uh, uh, the nut floxed on, the uh, wing tie down here so it won't come loose. And out here at the tip he's got his uh, a knot tied in the wire so that it can't be pulled back through the rib. Guys, right now are putting the uh, flocks on. The, you want to put it on all of the ribs. You want to put it on uh, the spars, and you want to put it on the trailing edge. Right along this top edge here, there's a little piece of foam on the inside of the wing that we glue on there for you, and that's so you, it'll give you a place to pile that flocks on top. Uh, don't worry about getting a little bit much. If you, if you need to kind of pile it up on top a little bit, it's okay. Uh, because it's going to squish out. It helps to have several people around when you start to do this operation right here. Yeah, yeah, like right along here, as far as it's a little bit low, well, it's real easy just to pile that flocks up pretty good. tail up and we've checked this cord line here on this on this uh, rib to make sure it's level and we want to make sure that in this position 
with the tail where it is, when we go to build the other wing, it, it's also level. That's kind of our last check before before we seal it up to make sure that our, our uh, wings are twisted the same, or they, they have the same amount of washout.
just squish this tip flat. You want to keep some thickness to it, otherwise it'll break off if someone runs into it. But it doesn't hurt to go ahead and put a little clamp on here. And you, you at least want to pull the edges together. You see, I'm just barely clamping the edge. I'm not, I'm not putting the clamp up in the middle of it. too well. If, you, if you're worried about it, you can get you some car wax and wax it a little bit first. But really, once it's all cured out, you'll be able to take a hammer and just hit it and it'll, they'll peel right off of there. Okay, camel clamps are going on, right? some of our the excess where it's oozing out. Also, can you get this down in here? Put a couple of steel weights up on here. All I'm doing is holding the, this wing section down right in here so that it so that it lines up with the center section. In fact we need a little bit more weight right here to hold this right on this corner. Let's come up with another weight there. I want to mention one other thing before we close up this wing. 
those of you that are building in gas tanks in the wing, uh, if, if, you, if you use this entire section here, you're going to have 15 gallons. Now that's quite a bit of fuel uh, for, for a KR2. I recommend only to come back about 8 or 10 inches. That'll give you, uh, you know, around eight, 8 or 10 gallons. And put another piece, either of this ply foam, or use the same urethane that you build in the center section out of. You come right straight across here. With another, with another piece of foam, run it down to the bottom and up into these sides, flush with the top here, and then put two layers of glass all inside this area here. And you're asking me what to do about this deal, uh, these nuts. It's hard to lay glass over them, so take a piece of this foam, uh, the urethane foam, and just put you a block. It'll come out to about, about right here. And that'll cover this whole section. You can drill or poke little holes in it, make it fit over this, and glue it on. So actually your glass will come, come down the rear side of the spar and then up and around the, uh, this piece of foam. And then to put your fittings in there, come near the center or the rear of the tank. I usually take a little piece of uh, aluminum, about uh, two inches square, drill my, drill my holes in it, one for a, a uh, uh, not a vent, but a, a, a drain, and then the other one for the fuel outlet. And I'll just glue it right inside here. And then I'll cut this out so I can set it in there, and uh, then the fuel lines go to the inside. Now, when you put the uh, before you put the top of the tank on, you need to figure out just cut, do some little bit of measuring here, figure out where that tank area is going to be, and put another layer of glass on the top of the inside of the wing skin. We have, we have these little fuel caps that we sell; they're eight bucks, and they work real well. They're made for marine application. This is a little metal piece here. You can do some grinding on the uh, with a grinder on the outside of this piece, and that will uh, allow the flux to stick. And when you, this is a little gasket. I usually just cut that tab off. But the trick when you're putting this this in the cap is, you always want the, the these little handles on top to be in a straight line with the airflow. So tighten it up good, and then when you glue it in the in the in the top of the uh, skin here, then then these are lined up. And then always when you tighten it up, it'll always come back to the same place. Okay, one other thing, you're going to need a fuel tank vent and a fuel tank. So the way I normally did do that is to take a piece of uh, either a quarter inch aluminum works really great, or uh, some type of flexible. I, I prefer a solid line, like a metal line, and it'll come right in the top here and bend out here just a little bit, and, and it'll come right in this top front forward corner. And then I like to run that along the top of the spar out at least another two feet before I bend and go down to the bottom. That makes this point here higher than your, than your tank here. That way when you're sitting on the ground and the wind's blowing a little bit and it's shaking it, and you're building up pressure, it, it, it won't tend to siphon out if, if, if this point is higher than this point right here. So come out here a little bit and then out through the bottom and you can bend that forward. So one other thing we want to mention uh, before we end the film is to make sure that uh, you get your ailerons in there. Well, that makes sense before you fly it. But you want to have the uh, uh, skin completely all glued together. In other words, the wing is all built. Now this just kind of goes back to the way the KR plans tell you to do it. You build the whole wing and then you come back and cut the aileron out of it. Well, we do it the same way. Go ahead and, and measure out your aileron and cut it out just like the KR plans tell you to do. And in our little instruction manual we show you how to cut the spars for it. You use the standard spars just like in the KR plans and the hinge. And all of the attachment for your uh, bell crank is all done just like the KR the standard KR wing is done. Uh, it doesn't hurt to take some of your scrap ply foams on the end of your aileron down here and, and make little end plates for the, for the ailerons. And you'll have plenty of that little scrap left over. And once you get it all cut out, you can uh, mount your uh, the bob weight here, the counterweight for the aileron, and you can cut it to fit all up underneath the inside there. On the leading edge, I wanted to point out here, uh, obviously we've got the, the wing is all glued together, and we've not yet glued this leading edge. 
uh, when, when all of these clamps, when we can take all these clamps off, we may need to come back and trim just a little bit off of this leading edge here so that it will match up with the, with the, with the bottom or with the, with the bottom skin and set back on that little, there's a little jog over there. Uh, it's really easy now, once you've done that, to work a little bit of uh, flocks up underneath there and then, and then go ahead and tape it. The reason we didn't do it now is, is there's just too many other things going on. It's easier to let everything else get hard than come back and do this. One thing we did do that I didn't point out earlier to the, the this little, there's a little flange underneath there where the, where the top skin's going to overlap. Uh, we, we took some 36 grit sandpaper and sanded that because it's got a glossy slick surface. Now this, I'm talking about the piece on the bottom skin here. If you sand that, it'll help that flock stick. Now once this is all taped down and and it's all glued real well across there and it's all dry, then you can come back and sand. You want to sand back to about where the foam is. And on the top and the bottom, it's 36 or at least at least 80 grit to, to, to make it kind of, instead of a clear look, it'll look kind of a whitish opaque where you sanded it. Then you'll put two strips of fiberglass cloth over that. Now, don't bring this cloth way back up on here because it's just more to, for you to have to fill up later and make it smoother. If we just come back, you know, about a two inch wide strip right over that joint on the leading edge, it'll make a real, real durable leading edge. And you really only need about one layer over that, but if, if you don't use two layers, you're going to do some sanding on there, and, and it'll, if you sand it off, it'll be, uh, you know, you'll be sanding through it. So you want to make sure that you have two layers on there. Come out here, uh, a question just came up a minute ago. How far around do you bring that cloth? Well, what, I like to bring it clear on around this tip and up to about where, where, the, where the curve stops and it starts going straight back. You can get the cloth to bend around that. Uh, you may need to do a little bit of body work in here with a little pink body putty uh, in some of these little areas here, maybe a little bit along that leading edge and sand that in before you put the cloth on and that will help help smooth that cloth around it. If you go back past, past this point on, on back, you can't get the cloth to bend around. It's just too sharp of a corner. So just kind of sand and grass and work that in there. You should have plenty of flocks in there, so you've got a good solid joint there anyway. Uh, I ought to mention, before you get ready to paint this skin, you'll want to uh, sand the whole skin with about a, a, a hundred grit, hundred to 120 grit. Uh, and, and you only want to sand it lightly just to knock some of the gloss off. You don't want to sand down through the glass, obviously. But if you take the shininess off, it'll help you paint it here a lot better. Uh, you should be able to paint it with a coat of uh, lacquer primer. I like to use that black lacquer primer that helps shield against the ultraviolet. And, and then wet sand it with 400 and then put any kind of paint on it you want. I normally use Emron.